In this demonstration, I'm going to be showing you how to work with the empty application template and how to build an application with more than one view controller. So we start off by creating a new Xcode project. <coughs> and this time we choose empty application. We'll call the application empty example in this example and save it. Now the first thing you'll notice is down the left hand side there are key files which are no longer present. We're going to have to add these files ourselves and link things together manually. So the first thing we're going to do is to create a new storyboard. So we right click, we choose new file and we choose user interface and storyboard. The storyboard is going to be an iPhone storyboard and we'll save it as storyboard into the application folder. So there we have the storyboard. <coughs> now because we've added the storyboard manually, we have to add a reference to it to the app target screen. So the app target screen, we click at the top here and you'll see in the deployment info here, we have a drop down for main interface. And you'll see that under the deployment info tab, under the deployment info section, there's a drop down for main interface and we choose our storyboard like so. <coughs> so now we've done this, we can start to build our interface. But before we do that, we need to modify the app delegate file because by default, it's because by default it builds, it builds its own user interface. So we delete that, like so, and then we can test the application to make sure it works. And you can see at the moment, the screen is completely black. And that's because we haven't put anything in our storyboard. So if you open the storyboard file, you can see that the storyboard is completely empty. So, <coughs> so what we're going to do is build an interface which has two view controllers. So we drag our view controllers onto the screen, like so. And we'll assign some controls. So in the first one, I'm going to have a button. And in the second one, I'm going to have a text field, like so. And I'm going to set up the layout, as we've done before. And assign some values to these. Set that to zero. So we'll set it to twenty. So one to twenty. And set that one to let's have twenty-two. But let's have forty-four on that one. Let's put it down a bit. The button will do the layout again, so Center vertically, center horizontally, and the button's now positioned in the middle of the screen. We'll change the text on that one to click me, like so. <coughs> Values. 
Now, each of these views has to have its own view controller file. So we need to create two new view controllers, one for each of the views. So we're going to right click, new file. We choose Coco Touch, Objective-C class. And because we are dealing with a view, we have to subclass, not NS object, but UI view controller. So we'll call this class home view controller and we'll save it. And then we'll create another one, which is going to be our edit view controller. New file, Objective-C class, edit view controller, and create it in the same folder. So now we have two view controllers. And in the storyboard, we have to assign the view controller to the view. So we click on the view, we go to the identity inspector, and we choose, I'm going to choose home view controller for this one. And I'm going to choose edit view controller for this one. So they've now been assigned their own view controllers. And when you start with a single view application template, this is all done for you. <coughs> so now what we're going to do is I'm going to embed both these views in a navigation controller. So I choose my first view, this arrow shows the launch view and I'm going to go to editor embed in navigation controller and if I hide the sidebars you'll see what's going on so you can see it's created this special line interface here this link and this is called a segue and this segue with this symbol is called a root view controller which means it controls the root view, the first view the person sees. And if we run this now, we will make one change before we run it. I've got to go to my home view controller.m and I've got to delete this init with nib name. And nib is the old way of doing interfaces before storyboards were created. So home view controller.m, edit view controller.m, I've got to delete this again. And now we should be able to test this. And as you can see, I've got this button, which doesn't work yet, <coughs> and I've got this bar at the top of the screen. That's my navigation controller bar, and that's where I can put titles and so on. So I'm going to go back into my code, go back into my storyboard, and I'm going to add some titles to these. So this one, I'm going to add, this is the bit at the top, is called the... Um, navigation item and every time if you add a view to a navbar controller it adds a new object called a navigation item and I can change the title of this to home home view and I can put a prompt if I want to uh, there's no back button and I'm now going to link the button to trigger this second view so I click on the button I control drag across and I've got a choice of segways. A push segue is the one we're going to use, which overlays, it overlays the view on top and gives us the option of a back button so we can get back to the um, previous view. A modal pushes up from the bottom and covers the entire view. As soon as I choose that, you'll notice that it now has a navigation item for this one. So I'm going to just modify this slightly because I've run out of space. Top space to top layout. I'm going to make this um, 88. Okay, that's not going to work. I'm going to put it on again. <coughs> so I've got a text field in place again. And I'll pin it. Pin, pin, and pin. So I'll modify these pins. 20 is normal. I'll make that one 44, like so. 
So now I can modify this. I can even type the title straight into here. So this is my edit view. I can even put a prompt on here. Enter new text. And that now appears above the title. So I've got a title property, a prompt property, and we'll talk about the back button property in a moment. So we'll run this again and see what happens. When I click on here, you can see how the prompt appears. And you see the home view label appears here. And the home view label matches the title of the view that's behind. But in this case, it's too big. So I'm going to go back here and come up with a custom back button. And I'll just change it to the word home. And if I test it now, we should see this work. Click away from there first. It's not working. Okay. So I've now got two views and I've got a segue. Now the important thing is all segues should have identifiers. I'm going to call this segue edit segue. And we can now work with the segue. My next job is to create an outlet for this button. What's going to happen is when I click on the button, it's going to launch the edit view. It's going to copy the text from the button into the edit view. And then I can change the text. And when I go back, it will update the text on the button. So I need an outlet so I can read the text from the button. So I'm going to go to my assistant editor. I'm going to pull up my homeviewcontroller.h file and I'm going to create an outlet. Button, outlet, there we are. I've now got a button. On the second view, <clears throat> on the second view, I'm going to do something similar. I'm going to create an outlet for my edit text but I'm also going to create a string property to store the value as it gets passed in like so So I've now built a very simple interface. My next job is to pass data from the home view controller to the edit view controller. And to do this, we're going to make use of this segue we created. So back to my standard editor, and I'm going to edit the home view controller.m file. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new method called prepare for segue. And this gets called just before the segue gets launched. The first thing we're going to do is to create a special method called prepare for segue, which will get called just before the segue gets launched. <coughs> so what I'm going to do first is I might have multiple segues, so I need to make sure I'm addressing the right segue. So the segue is passed to one of the parameters. So segue.identifier, and it's a string, so I need to uh, call the string method, is equal to string edit segue, which is the one we are dealing with. We'll log to show it works. So again, we test this. Click on there, you can see that edit segue now appears. So we know that's now been triggered. 
What we're going to do now is we're going to pass the data to the edit view controller. We're going to pass the data now to the edit view controller. <coughs> now before I do that, I need to import the edit view controller header file so I know what the methods are. So I import edit view controller and I now create an instance of edit view controller. EVC for shorthand equals segue.destination view controller. So I've now got a pointer to my second controller. And now I've got a pointer to it, I can start changing the properties. So I can start to copy the values over. So evc.message, remember we created a string property, equals self dot what did I call it? What? So EVC dot message equals self dot button dot title label, which is the label that's on the button dot text. So I've now copied, taken the value of the text of the title label and assigned it to the message property of my destination view controller. So now when I launch this, I can access that value. So let's see if this works. So let's see if this works. I go to my edit view controller and in view did load, let's see if it contains the right value. EVC, there's a label there, and let's see if it's there. Self, oh, well, I forgot to synthesize. There we are, that's synthesized, got my private instance variable, self.message, and that should print out the message. So let's see if it works. When I do this, you can see that there's the log message, EVC, click me. So the value has been passed through to the edit view controller. So now I can work with this value. <coughs> so now I need to assign this value to the text field. Self.textField.text equals message self dot message. So now if you test it again, it's always worth testing regularly to make sure it's working properly. You can see that the text field now displays click me. So I've passed the value from my root view controller through to my edit view controller. The next challenge is when I hit the back button, I would like to be able to pass the value back, the value that's been changed back to the, first, back to the root view controller. <clears throat> and this is called an unwind segue. So what we have to do first is create a method that gets triggered when the segue gets unwound. So my home view controller, I'm going to create another method. There's prepare for segue. And this is called, this can be any name you want it to be, but it has to return an IB action and I'll call this one unwind to, to home. And it has to take a UI storyboard segue parameter. And when we trigger the return button, when we trigger the, the, uh, when we trigger the unwind segue, this is the method that will get called, and this is where we can pass our value in. So let's go back to the edit view controller. <clears throat> My next job is I've got to connect the segue up and create an exit segue. So to do this, I go back to my storyboard, 
and when I click here, you'll see there's some icons at the bottom. That represents the Edit View Controller, and this represents the Exit Segue. So I control drag, so I control drag across, and when I let go, you can see that my Unwind to Home Segue method appears in the list. So I choose that. And I've now created my segue. And my next job is I've got to give it an identifier. So if you look at the so if you look at the tray here, which contains all the controls we've added, you can see the underlying segue is at the bottom. So I'm going to give it an identifier. So this will be home segue, for instance. And I've now created my segue identifier. <coughs> my next job is I've got to somehow trigger that segue and it'll pass the data back. Now, you could have put a button on here and trigger the button through the segue by dragging from the button to the exit to segue, but we're going to do it using the back button. And we're going to use a feature of the application lifecycle. So if I go back to my edit view controller file, we've got to view the load. We're now going to add another method called view will disappear. which gets triggered just before the view finally disappears. <coughs> so the first thing we've got to do is assign the string value to the message property. So self.message equals self.textField.text. So we've now copied the value into the message and the string message property. And now what we're going to do is close the segue, trigger the segue. Now all we're going to do is trigger the segue. So we start off by saying self perform segue with identifier. And the identifier is home segue sender self and that will trigger the segue so now we should be able to pass the data back and we're going to edit the home view controller to retrieve that value so I create my new edit view controller again so we can, we can, we can capture the message property and it's equal to segue.sourceViewController. So I've now got a pointer to my edit view controller, which contains our new message. And a string message equals evc.message, and we'll log that. message, sentijat, message. And then we'll see if that works. So I click on here, and I put a message in, click on back, you can see in the log file, you can see that the value mark has been passed back. So the final job is to assign it to the label of the button. A bit more trickier than you'd expect. There's a method to do this. Self.button <coughs> set title, uh, which is going to be message. Let's get the full auto complete. Set title, which is message, 
four states, and you can change the title for different states, up, down, pressed, and so on. This is UI control state normal. So now we should be able to be assigning Ah, uh, this will be so now we've got a destination control that will create an NS string message equals EVC dot message. And then finally, we're going to call a special method of the button to set its title. Set title message for state UI control state normal. And that's it. So this should now work properly. So I click on the button, which is now blank. Type in hello. Okay, we have to rewind the, edit this bit out. <clears throat> the final step now is to assign the string value that's in the message variable to the button text. And there's a special method called set title for control state, which allows us to do this. So it's method, so self dot button, set title, and the title is in the message variable for state UI control state normal. Final test to make sure this is all working. Click me. Change it to something different. Click on the back button and you can see that the value is now assigned to the button label.